brothers who are on the line. And those, you know, we got some stragglers. They get on a little later, but, um, you know, it's always a, a blessing having you brothers online to listen and learn. And basically, you know, with three or more in my name, in the name of Hamashiach Yawashai, that's what it's about. You know, he said that he'll dwell with us. So let's go to, um, I want to start off with Colossians 3 and 17. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all by Hashem Hamashiach Yawashai, giving thanks to the Abanawa by Hashem Hamashiach Yawashai. We give all praise to the Father and the Son. All right, Yahweh Wah Yahweh Shai. All right, so with that, I want to go into the lesson because um, we definitely give him all praise for everything. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You know, we always got to give him a hand for everything that he's done for us. So let's go to Psalms 135, verse 1. Praise ye the Most High. Praise ye the name of the Most High. Praise him, O ye servants of the Most High. Ye that stand in the house of the power, Yahweh, in the courts of the house of our power, Yahweh. Praise the Most High, Yahweh, for the Most High, Yahweh, is good. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. For the Most High, Yahweh, have chosen Jacob, Yaquab, unto himself, and Israel for his peculiar treasure. Where his peculiar treasure? Like a peculiar people, he has peculiar treasure. Most I have a lot of peculiar things, but Israel is one of his peculiar treasures. All right, we got to keep this in mind throughout the scriptures. There's no other by, no other people that he's calling peculiar but us. We're that pe peculiar creature. He also calls us that. There's a whole class on peculiarness in the Bible. Different things that he calls peculiar. He calls faith a peculiar faith. All right. So we got to understand what the things that the Most High is saying. And, and for some of you brothers and sisters who are online, who get kicked off, just get right back on. All right? And I believe I got brothers and sisters on the other uh, conference call line as well. I got two lines going on conference calls. All right? So let's go to, um, let's, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 27 and verse 1 to start this thing off. So we always give the Most High all praises. You know, without him, we are nothing because we don't know our right hand from our left hand, right? Without his name, without his word. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 1. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 1. And Moses, with the elders of Israel, commanded the people, saying, Keep all the commandments which I commanded you this day. This is what Moses told the Israelites. So when did they actually begin to keep the laws? When did they actually start? When did they actually start? Because we got to understand, when you see Deuteronomy, that's, this is the second generation that Moses was speaking to. The first generation died off. This is, these are the children of those who are Moses' age and older who came into the wilderness. So this is a whole different generation that he's speaking to. So when did they start keeping the commandments and knowing what they were doing? Anybody, can anybody answer that? When did they start keeping the commandments? You speaking of the Israelites or? I'm speaking of the Israelites. The Israelites. Okay. This okay if you don't know. If you don't know, we'll go right to the scripture. So um, let's find out when they started keeping the commandments. Because most people think the second generation started keeping them when, when it was Moses. Right? Moses t told them Moses about the Moses got the commandments when he, when he started keeping the commandments. When he went on the mountain and got them. Right. And he brought them down. But they didn't quite understand the commandments. I mean, just think about it with us. The 613 commandments. I mean, uh, 613 laws and 10 commandments, right? We didn't just learn it overnight. It took us time. You know, that's a lot of laws, man. I mean, it just hits you all of, all of a sudden, boom. You got to learn them all. Most of us ain't going to know them all. All right? A lot of them had to go to the elders in order to get it, to understand it. That's why he said to the elders, 
you know, let's read it again. Deuteronomy 27 and 1. Deuteronomy chapter 27, verse 1. Then Moses, with the elders of Israel, commanded the people. So it was the elders was involved too. Saying, keep all the commandments which I commanded you this day. Right? And so this is when it started. So with these commandments, look at verse uh, 3. And thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law when thou art passed over. They hadn't went over the Jordan, because when you read the, the second verse, it says, And it shall be on the day when you shall pass over the Jordan unto the land which the Lord thy power giveth, that thou set thee up great stones and plaster them with plaster. And thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law when thou art passed over. They hadn't passed over the Jordan yet, so they weren't keeping the commandments or the laws. They, did, they hadn't figured out how to keep them yet. Okay? So when did they pass over the Jordan? Remember, Moses didn't go over the Jordan. He didn't go into the promised land. He had to, he had to watch the children of Israel go into the promised land. See, a lot, of, a lot of brothers don't understand that, okay, Moses got the commandments in Exodus and Deuteronomy, but the children of Israel, the second generation, didn't know nothing about it. The first generation died off because they was hard-headed. All right? You got to remember, this is Deuteronomy. This is the second generation. So when did this take place? When did they pass over the Jordan? Now read on. Verse 3. And thou shalt write upon them all the words of this law when thou art passed over, that thou mayest go unto the land which the Most High thy power giveth thee, a land that floweth with milk and honey, as the power of the Most High of thy fathers have promised thee. Therefore it shall be when you gone over the Jordan, that ye shall set up these stones, which I command you this day, in Mount Ebal, and thou shalt plaster them with plaster. They hadn't yet got there. All right? So, so this is very important for us to know when did they start keeping the commandments. It wasn't necessarily in the wilderness for the new generation. They didn't start keeping it until they crossed the Jordan into the land of milk and honey. Okay? Let's go to Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1, verse 7. And this is when the law begins. Okay? Only be thou strong and very courageous. I'll start at verse 1. Let's go to verse 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Most High, it came to pass that the Most High spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, or Yahshua, the son of Nun, or Yahawashai too, you know. Moses minister saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore I arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. So now they're crossing over the Jordan. And the Most High is, the Most High is great because he lists everything in the scriptures. You just got to pay attention to it. It's not open to your mind until you keep reading. You might take you 20 years before you get certain verses because it's not unlocked in your mind yet. All right. So they didn't cross over the Jordan until the book of Joshua. That's when they started. That's when they had to start keeping the commandment. Remember, we got to get to the land and keep them perfectly. We can't keep them perfectly here in America or in our captivity. We cannot keep them perfectly. We could try. But it's not going to be perfect until we get into the land. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'll show you about the saints because we're the saints, right? We're the saints. The Israelites are the saints. Okay, so I'll show you in the scriptures that even the saints can't keep it perfectly in captivity. All right, but does that mean that we stop keeping the commandments? No, we keep the commandments fully, okay, to the best of our ability. We're going to be judged on how we keep the commandments to the best of our ability. We're still going to be judged on that. All right, so let's go to, um, let's read Joshua uh, verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. And y'all brothers probably heard this a lot, this verse. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do 
according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Most High thy power is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Wherever we go, the Most High is with us, right? Wherever we go. But we cannot keep it perfectly until we get back into the land. Until we become rulers again in our rulership. Okay? We got to be ruling to keep it perfectly. You, I mean, it's, it's evident. We're not ruling, so how are we going to keep it perfect? I mean, we, we try to keep the days, some of the feast days, and some of us got to work. That's why I sent the, uh, the text out of the... Um, of the schedule of the new moons when they come in and also the feast days for the whole month for the whole year so you can plan to get them off but a lot of brothers ain't getting that how are they going to be saints how are they going to be perfect in this captivity when they're not practicing because you know we got to rehearse the righteous acts right let's go to judges chapter one uh judges chapter five Judges chapter 5, verse 11. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing waters, and I went over this before, the drawing waters are the different philosophies here. There, meaning here, wherever we're scattered, shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Most High, even the righteous acts towards the inhabitants of his village in Israel. Then shall the people of the Most High go down to the gates. Okay, so our job is to rehearse the righteous laws to the best of our ability. That's our job, to the best of your ability. Okay, but you got to understand when um, Isaiah was in captivity, he tried, but did the children of Israel listen to him? No. Ezekiel, he tried to keep it to the best of his ability, but did the rest of the Israelites listen to him? No. You know, he was a prophet amongst the people. They were all prophets, right? Let's go to um, Revelation 4 and 8. This is what the angels are doing. And we said that the class is called Hallelujah because we give them all praise. This is what the angels are doing. Revelation chapter 4 verse 8. Revelation chapter 4 verse 8. And the four beasts had each of them six wings about him. And they were full of eyes within. And they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, holy, holy. Kadash, Kadash, Kadash. All right? That's the pure language. Kadash. Holy, holy, holy. Lord, our power, our mighty. All right? Our power, the Most High, our mighty. Which was and is and is to come. Right, so they give them praise all day long. Holy, holy, holy. These angels. Right? Because they're in their greatest magnificent. We can't be to our greatest capacity on the earth until we get back in the land. Okay? These angels are in their greatest capacity. They're full strength. We're not a full strength here in America. Let's see what Isaiah did with this. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6, and let's start at verse 1. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Hamashiach sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. So this is the Hamashiach. He's in the, New, he's in the Old Testament. The Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. Okay? And as you read on, it talks about the angels that came on the earth. Let's go to verse... Um, Three. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the most high of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. This is Isaiah having a, a vision. Okay? He's seeing these very angels we just read in Revelation. Right? They're saying, Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. All praises. And the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. And the house was filled with smoke. 
Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. Right? And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. Meaning these people, even though they're Israelites and they're the saints, they're not keeping the laws perfectly. All right? From even this prophet, even this prophet, he's not keeping, he's trying. It's our job to try to the best of our ability, not to waver, but to do everything in sincerity, do it righteously. Okay? For mine eyes have seen the king, the power of hosts. So here's Isaiah talking about the same thing, right? He sees the same angel saying, holy, 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 hallelujah, 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 right? Could that be separate, separate, separate? Say that again? Could that be, because you know the, the word holy means separate. Yeah. He might have been saying separate, separate, separate. They've already separated. If already, he, he could have been saying that to the people. But you got to understand, the Most High's cloud came on the earth. And so um, he's dealing with the Holy of Holies. If, if the Most High, if you had a vision in your dream and you've seen the Most High uh, descending down on earth, that place is considered holy. Remember what he told Joshua? Um, let's go there real quick. Let's go to Joshua chapter 5, verse 13. Joshua chapter 5, verse 13. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Art thou for us or for our adversary? And he said, Nay, but as captain of the host of the Most High am I now come. This is Yahawashai. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said unto him, What saith my power unto his servant? And the captain of the Most High of hosts said unto Joshua, Loose thy shoes from off thy foot, for the place whereon thou standest is holy. That place is now considered a holy place. Okay? If, if, if the Most High, if an angel came into your house, that house would be considered a holy place. But this place is a land of blasphemers. This is a cursed land where we at. Okay? This is a cursed land. But in that particular place, Israel was in a, in a, in a uh, position of gaining land. They were conquering people to take the land. These lands were going to soon become holy for Israel. Okay? So when, uh, when Isaiah had that vision... That was in the land of Israel. That place was already holy. You get what I'm saying? That's not going to happen here in America. We have the Bible. This is our guide back to that land. This book. Okay? He's going to destroy this place. That's the difference. But you saying separate, it does mean separate. It also means um, um, pure. Okay? It means pure. The Most High is pure. Okay? Let's go to um, Sarah chapter 42 in the Apocrypha. Sarah chapter 42 and verse uh, 17. 42 verse 17. And it says, it reads, The Most High have not given power to the saints to declare all his marvelous works, which the almighty power firmly settled, that whatsoever it is might be established for his glory. So he's telling you, look, we the saints, but we're not going to have all power. We're only going to have a portion of knowledge in this captivity. We're not going to have the full understanding of the Bible. There's a lot of things that we're, not, that we're just not going to be able to break down. You know what I mean, brother? Say, I want to break down on this, or break down on that. A lot of things ain't meant for this time period. You get what I'm saying? You get what I'm saying? So, this is what we have to do, and that's why he said, "Hold fast to what you have until I return." When he returns, he's going to teach us what all things. Yeah. So that's what we have to prepare ourselves for, you know. So the saints are not going to get everything in this kingdom. 
So we got to give him praise for everything. I mean, this truth being in this earth, you know, this truth being in the earth is, is a light that punches holes in everything, man, everywhere in this last kingdom. All the lies and philosophies is punching holes in it where we can see clearly. You know, it's allowing us to praise him while we walk in his truth and see the folly all around us. You know, and this truth, uh, basically, I mean, when you really think about it, you can, you can, this truth cannot be equal with anything else because any other religion that you may have been in, this walk is 20 times harder than any other religion that you could think of. Because you know why? Because we're walking in the consciousness of the spirit. We're not walking by the letter of the law, but the consciousness of following the law by the spirit. We still got to keep the law, right? We yeah. keep the law. So everything we know is being, I mean, we're being chastised even harder in this kingdom. A Muslim is not being chastised like we are. A Christian is not being chastised like we are because we know what right from wrong. They don't. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15 and 30. Look at what Paul says. First Corinthians, verse 15 and 30. And Paul says this. And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? A Muslim don't stand in jeopardy every hour. He said he only gets tried three times a year. You know what I mean? Well, what kind of chastisement is that? Three times a year. We get tried every hour. Every day. You know what I'm saying? Verse 31. I protest by your rejoicing which I have in Hamashiach Yahweh I die daily. Paul said we die daily. Why? Because we're being chastised daily. We have to, we have to let that old man die. The things that we like, we have to get rid of it. And we're all guilty of these things. You know, that old man continually tugs on us. We got to let that go. And, and our women. You know, that old woman tugs on our women. So it's, it's, it's a form of chastisement that we have to overcome. You know, and, and it's through the spirit. Because the letter of the law, this is where the letter of the law and the consciousness of the law are two different things. Yahweh I came to put to death the letter of the law, which is the sacrifices. Okay? Sacrifices and the what? The judgments. Okay? That's done away with. But when you go into the commandments, for example, when you look at the commandments, you go into God worship, right? You go to Deuteronomy 12 and 2. It says the practice of God worship must be destroyed. We all know that, right? Holidays, you know, stem from other gods. We already know that. Activity which turned to God worship, uh, we gotta, it's got to be treated according to the law. Everything's got to be treated according to the law. Okay? You got to remember what the God worshipers did to Israel when you go to Deuteronomy 25 and 17. You know, you got to blot out the remembrance of God worshipers when you go to Deuteronomy 25. That whole chapter is about God worship. Okay? Now, that's not part of the letter of the law. That's walking in consciousness of the law. Okay? Uh, so even when it goes to uh, the concern in times of tribulation and persecution, our conduct must be according to the Most High Yahweh law during times of persecution. You know what I'm saying? During the times of persecution, you have to remember His laws so you can perfect, so you can prevail. It's not according to the letter of the law, like Christians. Oh, it's the letter. Of, no, you don't understand. It's the consciousness of law. That's why Paul said, "I die daily." Or I die hourly because I'm changing all the time. You know, for the most high's laws. I'm trying to get right. You know? Like, when we go to the camp, I mean, it must be equipped with the necessary, uh, it must be equipped with the necessary, you know, the sanitary rules apply when we go to camp on the weekends. We just don't go out there and start speaking. Man, we all have to perform. A, it's almost like a ritual we do. We have to bathe. You know, you got to groom yourself. You just don't go out there. You preparing, you, you reading, you studying, you know. You talk to one another. Make sure if make sure a brother didn't fall off the night before in the sin. If he don't, if he in the sin, you can't be speaking. It's simple. You can't speak when you sin. You got to step out the camp. You know what I mean? So, I mean, these are walking in consciousness, you know. 
the duties of our fellow men, stolen property must be returned to them. You know, the poor, the poor must be taken care of according to the Most High's laws. You know, a brother out there hungry, you got to give him something to eat. You know, loans to a brother must be without interest. You know what I'm saying? It's all kinds of stuff. We must pay the hired worker his wages at the agreed time. You know, whereas Esau don't do that. You know, those who sin must be corrected. It's, it's simple. You go to Leviticus 19. Those who sin must be corrected. You know? So, I mean, the covenant of our brothers and sisters is everything among ourselves. You know? So, I mean, you go on and on and on. Through our, you know, you can talk about the family showing honor and respect to the most high appointed teachers. You know, even, even the teachers have a, their part of the family. You know, it's not just your immediate uh, uh, parents, but it's to, to the brothers and sisters teaching too. So everything is holy to the Most High. You know, let's go, um, let's read on. Actually, there's some more meat in this. Uh, verse 30, I want to read verse 31, 32. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts of Ephesus, and these beasts are not animals, these are men. What advantage it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Right? Awake to righteousness and sin not. So this is what we got to do. Awake to righteousness. So why? So we don't sin. So when you awake to righteousness, you're trying to keep the laws to the best of your ability so you don't fall off the wagon. All right. For some have not known knowledge of the Most High. I speak this to your shame. All right. So we got we to gotta understand what we must do as Israelite men. That's what we have to do. This walk, it consists of more than temptation. You know what I mean? Uh, than, than, like I said, any other thing that you have seen or been into. Why? Because we're all walking in the spirit, like I said, of the law. Not the letter of the law. Without consciousness, but the spirit of the law with consciousness. All right. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 5 and 15. This is, this is the critical part that Christians lack. All right. The critical part that they lack is that these laws are not gone. Ephesians chapter 5 and 15. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. All right? So we got to be very wise in this by studying his laws. Redeem of the time because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Most High is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. All right? That's our, that's our whole mission, to be filled with the Spirit. It says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Most brothers say, man, I ain't seen you, man. You can sing in this truth. Look at the Levites. They was, man, they sung all day long. They loved to sing to the Most High, the Levites. David played music, all right? Samson played music. Verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things unto the Most High and the Father. In the name of our power, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Everything is through him. So this is how we got to be. Hallelujah. Right? All praises. So if we are doing this, then we should know what to watch for. All right? We got to know all of these things in order to know what to watch for. We got to help one another. Let's go to Job chapter 23. And look at, look at what Job had to deal with, you know, because Job was a very wise man, but he was being scourged. I want to go to Job 23 and verse 8. It says, Behold, I go forward, but he is not there, and backward, but I cannot perceive him. This is, this is Job studying the Most High. He said, If I go forward, I don't see him. I don't feel him. Let me go backward and see if I can feel the most high. Maybe something's not right. You know, you feel like something ain't right. That's how he's saying. Verse 9. On the left hand where he doeth work, but I cannot behold him. 
How does he do work? With Satan's on the left hand side. That's how he deal with work. Work is going on all the time. You go outside your house, Satan's work is always going on. Everywhere you look, on the left hand side. This is on the left hand where he doeth work, but I cannot behold him. He hideth himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. This is the most high. He hideth himself where? On the right hand side. He's watching us to see what you're going to do day to day. You're going to go to the right hand or you're going to go to the left hand. You're going to break because you think you can get away with it. You know? But he knoweth the way that I take. When he have tried me, I shall come forth as gold. So he, he's trying us. You know, the most I want to see if you love him. My foot hath held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. Many of us cannot say that. Many of us can't say what Job said. You know, it's always something that gets in the way of us. That cause many brothers and sisters to fall off. You got to pick yourself up and try not to do it again to the best of your ability you know I don't know what other brother's sins may be but I, I advise that you try to clean it up quickly if you want to do righteousness in this in this wicked society things are always coming at you you know mm -hmm. always mm -hmm. verse 12 neither have I gone back from the commandment of his lips I have esteemed the words of his mouth more than my necessary food, but he is in one mind, and who can turn him? And what is so detestive, even that he doeth, desire even that he doeth. For he performeth the thing that is appointed for me, and many such things are with him. Therefore am I troubled at his presence? When I consider, I am afraid of him. What does it mean to consider? He says, when I consider, then I'm afraid of him. What is that? When you think about what you can do to him. Yeah, it's, it's, it's your conscience. When you consider the things of your consciousness of breaking that law, yeah, you're right. What is the most high going to do to me? And you're looking. you actually looking to see where it's going to come from because you don't know how it's going to come. You don't know in what form it's going to come. It could, it could take 30 days before it hit. You sitting there waiting on, on something to come the next hour, two hours, one day. Most I may have it come a year from now. Huh? Huh? You know you was wrong when you did. Yeah. You know it's coming. You know it's coming. It's just when it comes, you're going to be like, oh, wow, this is what I got to deal with. You know? <laughs> you know, he would have seen, he would have seen if you humble enough to repent and ask for mercy. Let's go to Psalms 119 to 59. Psalms 119, verse 59. I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimony. Isn't that what Job just said? Hmm. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. Okay? And like I said, this is the worst captivity this one is because we're in we're in the worst heathen nation of all the demon nation you know these scriptures be even cutting me sometimes no one is exempt you no know? there's no one exempt from this stuff let's go to first corinthians chapter 3 verse 13 you know i'll be bringing some of these scriptures out i'll be like oh man you know is you know, for anybody to say it don't cut their, they don't cut their own self, they do. You know? That's right. But they're just not conscious of what they're doing. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 13. Every man's work shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is if any man work abide which he have built thereupon he shall receive a reward so by fire we're going to be tried look at 15 if any man's work shall be burnt he shall suffer loss 
but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. So by fire, we're going to be burnt, man. We're going to see if we can stand in the midst of the Most High by fire. You know, what did Yahweh do? Or what did John say about Yahweh What did he say? When you go to Luke chapter 3 and 16, what did he say Yahweh came into the world to do? Let's go to uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Luke chapter 3, verse 16. So he said, everything's going to be burned up, right? Our gift going to be burned up by fire. We're going to be chastised by fire, right? Same thing in Luke chapter 3, verse 16. This is what Paul said. Um, is it Luke 3 and 16? Uh, let's see. Yeah. John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water. But one mightier than I cometh, the latch of the latch of, of his shoes, I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire, right? He's gonna make all your sins come to your dome, to your brain. You're gonna recall everything you did. Why? Because of the way that he's bringing forth the commandments, right? The way that he speaks, the way that he spoke to the people, he cut them. He was cutting the people all day long, right? Yeah. Let's go to Luke 8 and 7. He was cutting the, uh, the, the uh, Pharisees, the Sadducees, he was cutting them. Every time they said something, he was cutting them with the law, cutting them with the scriptures, right? By fire. He was burning them up. Yeah. This is Luke chapter 8, verse 17. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. So to the Most High, he sees all things, and it's up to him whether he sets traps and snares based on your actions. Your, sin your sincerity or your sin uh, sincereness, your humbleness, your ability to forgive brothers and sisters in the truth and out has a lot to do with how the Most High is going to deal with you. It's based on your humbleness. All right? Look at Matthew 5 and 7. I want to go into this chapter because um, if you're just now coming into the truth and you're just waking up and you used to read the Bible, you need to rearrange all your thoughts because what you have learned is backwards. All right? When you read Matthew chapter 5, Sermon on the Mount, that whole Sermon on the Mount was concerning the Israelites. It was not concerning all people. Okay? Just so you know. And I'll start off. Let me read Matthew 5 and 7. It says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. I'm going to give you all the precepts on this. All right? So, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So, who is that speaking about? It's speaking about Israel. All right? So, we have to learn to walk in mercy amongst our brethren, so we can retain and receive mercy. Let's go to Psalms 18. Let's give you the precept. Because there's precepts to this. When he came out with the Sermon on the Mount, he wasn't saying nothing new. It was already spoken of. It was already written in the Old Testament. Psalms 18 and 25. It's like it. Psalms 18 25. With the merciful thou will show thyself merciful. With an upright man, thou wilt show thyself upright. Okay, so he's speaking of Israel right here. Let's go back. These are the these are the these are the merciful. Let's look at uh, more of these precepts from chapter five of Matthew. I just want to show y'all some things concerning this chapter, uh, verse nine. Let's read that. It says, uh, "Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of the Most High." Now, who are the children of the Most High? We should all know who the children are. We're going to go forward and get a precept from the book of Acts. Let's go to Acts chapter 10, verse 36. Acts chapter 10, verse 36. The word which the Most High sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace, by Yahweh Shai Hamashiach. He is Lord of all. Alright. 
So blessed are the peacemakers. Who are the peacemakers? Those who preach Yahweh Shai, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Those are the peacemakers. That's the prophecy of speaking, Yahweh Shai. So when we speak in the form of our brother, our high priest, our king, Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, that's peace. Okay? That's peace to the Israelites and peace to all who listen. That's, that's, that's the peace coming on earth. Let's go to Matthew 5 and 8. Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see the Most High. You guys should be writing this down because these are the precepts that you're going to need later on down the line. Let's go to Psalms 18 and 26. Psalms 18 verse 26. With the pure thou wilt show thyself pure. And with the four, thou will show thyself four. So that's what the pure is, right? So in order to be pure, you have to behave as if you're pure by keeping his commandments. Mm. Let's just go to Matthew 5 and 6. What does that say? Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. All right, so let's find out who are the hungry. Now I'm kind of skipping around here. Let's go to Isaiah 49. Let's get a precept from that. Let's find out who the hungry is. Isaiah chapter 49, verse 10. They shall not hunger, nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. For he that have mercy on them shall lead them by the springs of water. Shall he guide them? So who is this? These are the Israelites. When you read the book Isaiah, it's speaking of the Israelites. Okay? Let's get another one. Let's go to Matthew 5 and 10. Matthew 5 and 10. It says, Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Whose is the kingdom of heaven? At Isaiah 66 and 5. Isaiah 66 and 5 is the precept for this one. Isaiah 66 and 5. Hear the word of the Most High, ye that tremble at his word. Your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, Let the Lord, the Most High, be glorified. But he shall appear to your joy. And they shall be ashamed. Who's going to appear to our joy? The Most High. So when you read Matthew 5 and 10, it's speaking about the Most High's mercy coming onto you. You will see the kingdom of heaven. All right. Let's go to uh, Matthew 5 and 4. Matthew 5 verse 4. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Who are they that mourn? Let's find out. Let's go to Isaiah 61 verse 2. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Most High and the day of vengeance of our power, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. So who is that that mourn? Zion, Israel. Zion is the same as Israel. When you see Zion, that's the city of peace. When you see Israel, that's the city of peace. All right? To give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, and they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Most High, that he may be glorified. All right, is that all of them? Let me give you one more. I think it's, uh, I don't think we hit five. Matthew 5, verse 5. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. All right, let's get the precept on that. Let's go to Psalms 37. So you have it. You need to have this in your arsenal. Psalms chapter 37, verse 11. <clears throat> but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. And what is peace? Yahweh shot. All right, so the meek is going to inherit the earth. Let's go to one more. Verse 22. Same chapter. For such as 
he be blessed of him, shall inherit the earth. And they that be cursed of him shall be cut off. So if you don't speak of Yahawashai, you're going to be cursed from the earth. <clears throat> you know? When he said you don't believe in the son, you cursed. You cursed again. You was already cursed once. You're going to be cursed again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like, why you want to why you want to even play with that? Look at verse 12, Matthew 5 and 12. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. All right, so our job is to go out and teach this word, tell our people about who they are. While we in this captivity, we, we're going to be blessed when we um, do what we're supposed to do. When we try to keep the commandments to the best of our ability. You know, but in this captivity, many people are going to hate us just like they killed the prophets. They're going to hate us. Why? Because we're in the worst of the worst nation. All right. Ezekiel 7 and 24. Ezekiel 7, 24 says, Wherefore I will bring the worst of the heathen, and they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. So, right now, we're in the worst of the worst place amongst the worst. That's why I said we die daily, we die hourly, because we're dealing with them. What they're doing as a whole, whether they know it or not, their system is corrupting our, all of our people. Everything that our people are doing is corrupting. Let me show you this. And uh, this is a book called um, "Everything You Need, Everything You Know Is Wrong," and this is written by Russ Kick, R U S S K I C K, Russ Kick. And uh, what I want to first do is go to page two forty in this book. And on page 240 it says, uh, listen to this, it says, this is the middle of the page, this is during the time of George Bush, it says, and yet it turns out that what Homeland Security really means is a mad rush to reassemble basic public infrastructure and, and re resurrect health and safety standards that have been drastically eroded. The troops at the front lines of America's new war are in battle indeed. The very bureaucracies that have been cut back, privatized, and vilified for two decades, not just in the U.S., but in virtually every country in the world. So what George Bush did was created Homeland Security to basically what? Build up United States infrastructure. And I'm going to explain to you more why. Look at this. This is a public health is a national security issue. U.S. Secretary of Healthy Tommy Thompson observed in October 2001. It says Environmental Protection Agency is years behind schedule in safeguarding the water supply against bioterrorist attacks. So this is why they brought in the Homeland Security. Like I said, this is the worst of the worst heathen. They've torn down everybody else's infrastructure by doing it uh, uh, going in uh, internally and destroying it. Now it's happening to them. Everything that they did to the people in other countries, now it's coming back on them. All right? And it's happening already. It says, according to an audit released on October 4th, 2001, the EPA was supposed to have identified security vulnerabilities in municipal water supplies by 1999. But it hasn't yet completed even the first stage. So you got to remember when 9-11 happened, that was in 2001. The whole reason why it happened was to build up homeland security to protect the infrastructure of the United States and all other places that are tentacles to this octopus. All right. So that's what's going on. I mean, and when you think about it, what the U.S. has done... The other countries for years, like I said, it's happening to them now. It's all in reverse. Let's go to, I'm going to go to page 239 in the same book. This is something that you should know, you know, what's going on in this country because we've been brain, brain polluted, basically. This is page 239. Listen to what this says. 
It says the new battlefields are not just the Pentagon, but also the post office. That's the new battlefield. Not just military intelligence, but also training for doctors and nurses. Not a sexy new missile defense shield, but the boring old food and drug administration. So everything that Americans love, that's the very thing you need to watch. That's the new war. The food that you eat, that's why you see a lot of people dying like crazy right now. Those are the foods. The doctors, they killing people, right? The post office. That's, you know why they say post office? Because that's how your mail, when your mail travels through these different countries, okay, when you go through the airport, who checks you when you go through the airport? TSA, right? TSA checks you through the airport. Who checks the mail? Nobody. Nobody. Remember uh, the chemical agent anthrax? Now, people was dying. That's why they caught that as quick as they did. But who's to say other stuff ain't being traveled that way? You know? Mm. All kinds of stuff are being brought into this country and is done right up under our noses. Listen to this. But as fears of bioterrorism mount, it could well turn out that their best weapons are the rips and holes in the U.S. public infrastructure. So these new terrorists, the way that they're infiltrating America is internally. That's the way it's happening. And that's how the missiles are going to be dropped on America, if you really ask me. They're going to get in here and put a virus in this system where it's going to cor corrupt all the doggone systems. That's why I said the only thing that's going to protect us is keeping the most size law, statutes, and commandments. This stuff has already been going on. This is back in 2001. Can you imagine? It's been 15 years now. It's been 15 years. What kind of technology do you think is out there now? Some of your best, um, some of your best, um, what do you call those guys that, that, that come up with these new viruses for computers? Some of your best uh, IT guys are coming from India, are coming from uh, the Middle East, right? And they're the ones creating all these new viruses. Check out what the scriptures say. Let's go to Habakkuk. Habakkuk. Habakkuk, my brother say. Everything has been prophesied in the Bible about this stuff. That's why I say hallelujah, because we wouldn't have a clue if we didn't know this. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 6. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 6. Shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him? Who's the him? Esau. And say, woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. How did he increase? Taking other people's land. Right? Isn't that how he did it? He took everybody's land. So that's how he increased. He brings people to his land to work. He said, Woe to, to him that increaseth that which is not his. How long? And to him that laid of himself with thick clay. Verse 7. Shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee? Right? You see these terrorists within? How are they going to bite the infrastructure? By acting like they're normal citizens. And then when they get that, that call, they're going to do like Paris. It's going to be the same thing. What happened over in Paris can happen here. They just sleeper cells. They call them sleeper cells. It says, And awake, that shall vex thee, and thou shalt be for booties unto them. <clears throat> Meaning goods. Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee, because of men's blood and for the violence of the land of the city and of all that dwell therein. What does that mean? When you think about all the wars that didn't happen overseas, do you think that they forgot about their children being killed by having chemical no. agents being dropped on their family members and having one arm and having the other arm melt off their body? You think they forgot about that stuff? You know, people got to wake up. These people have lost family members and they'll do anything to put that hurt back in this so-called country called America or, or Europe. They don't care. Okay? And that's what these people, these Americans don't understand. They don't have any hope. 
they've already destroyed nation after nation. Not only that, they destroyed the main one that the Most High loved the most, Jacob. And so being, hmm. being that Jacob was destroyed mentally and physically, the Most High is going to bring ultimate judgment on this place. He said he's going to bring double on this place. Okay? So we have so to... When he said most to him, that he was saying death to him. Death to him, exactly. So when you look at these countries like Peru, Colombia, Argentina, America has tried to infiltrate those countries, and what they did was they killed their presidents and withdrew because the people didn't want to listen to them, and now those countries are dying off. But now those countries... The dopes, the, all the dope dealer, uh, all the uh, drugs are coming into the Americas and is destroying the people here. Not only that, those big time dope dealers are buying, putting their stocks, putting their, putting their money in stocks and bonds in America where they can make a change by the number of people who's in there. They could change things by the stocks that they're in, where they start investing in them and they start gaining money in that interest where they can also start buying more stocks, eventually they'll have say-so in that company to change the things that go on in that company. They can start hiring their own within that company. And so they start destroying the corporations because these corporations are the very things that back these schools. When you look at all these schools across America, it's the corporations that back it. Okay? I'm going to go to page 275 in this book. Page 275, listen to this, it says, um, <clears throat> it says, an executive director of the National Education Association announced that his organization expected to accomplish by education what dictators in Europe are seeking to do by compulsion and force. This is what America is trying to do. Force their education on our people to destroy them mentally, where they become robots. You see, kids don't even want to go to school today. You know, they'd rather watch TV or cut class and do their thing because it's not interesting to them. Um, it says that in the 1920s were a boom period for forced schooling as well as for the stock market. In 1928, a well-regarded volume called A Sociological Philo Philosophy of Education claimed it is the business of teachers to run not merely schools, but the world. See that? They want to run the world with their school systems. They want to put this poison all over the world. A year later, the famous creator of educational psychology, Edward Thorndike of Columbia Teachers College, announced academic subjects are of little value. His colleague at Teachers College, William Kirkpatrick, boasted in education and social crisis that the whole tradition of rearing the young was being made over by experts. So the experts have a hand in this. When you go up the chain, it's the it's these um, these people who got money are the ones who are corrupting the people on the bottom. It's so you can remain a slave and work for them. Mm. I mean, it's, it's it's simple, you know. Uh, I'm gonna read a little bit more. It says, meanwhile, at the project offices of an important employer of experts, the Rockefeller Foundation. Friends were hearing from President Max Mason that a comprehensive national program was underway to allow, in Mason's words, the control of human behavior. The dazzling ambition was announced on April 11, 1933. Schooling figured prominently in the design. This schooling that's going out is destroying. You know, um, they have, uh, what do they call that? I think Salvation Army. They go out and they, uh, I forget what they call it. They call it something. Um, where they recruit teachers, they recruit, recruit people to go and teach in these other foreign lands. You know, why are they teaching in these foreign lands? Because they're taking corporations over there like Coca-Cola. They're bringing all their stuff over there. So they need, them, they need people to work for them. So how can you get those people to work and be a, um, a good um, representative of the company? You got to send them to your school. You got to give them, give them something to work for. Send them to your school, train them on how to think, how to uh, act in your in your corporation, in your system, and build that system up. You see, they have they have a plot against the whole world. 
This is Rockefeller had been inspired by the work of Eastern European scientist Hermann Müller. Here goes those Germans to invest heavily in genetics. Okay, what kind of genetics genetics did they use on us? What are they using on us? What kind of genetics? You guys know? What kind of genetics are they using on us? Like eugenics? There you go. You got the, yeah. got the eugenics movement on us. Alright? So the eugenics is dealing with the um, Planned Parenthoods, with the uh, medicines, uh, free medicine that they give us, free vaccines that they give us in the black communities and Latino communities. That's the eugenics. You know, um, study, it's the study of, uh, of minorities, so, so to speak. <clears throat> so it started here in 1930. It says Mueller had used x rays to override genetic law, including mutations in fruit flies. So all these things that they're using in our vaccines. It's causing, they, they studied the stuff where it causes mu mutations in different things, different animals. This seemed to open the door to the scientific control of life itself. That's why you got the GMOs, the genetically modified organisms, the fruit, the fish, the chickens, everything's ge uh, gen genetically modified now. When you look at the scriptures, I think it's in the book of Ezra chapter 9, he says, eat the bountiful things of the land. He didn't say eat everything. The bountiful things of the land are what? Fruit, vegetables, all right, fish. And you got to even be careful with that now. Can't eat farm fish. You know, they say eat the wild fish. You got to be careful when you eat the wild fish because it might have too, too much mercury in it. You know, so I mean, you know, the most I said, he, uh, he said we're going to eat poison in this day, but he wasn't going to let it harm us. All right. It says Mueller preached that plan breeding would bring mankind to paradise faster than God. Look at that. I'll read that again. Mueller preached that plan breeding would bring mankind to paradise faster than God. So they want to be God. All right. His proposal received enthusiastic endorsement from the greatest scientists of that day as well as from powerful economic interests. So these dudes, they know what they're doing. They trying to they trying to usher in they trying to usher in the time of the most high. That's what they're trying to do. And it's okay by me. If they want to usher it in, that's great because I mean our time is getting really close. Look at this. It says um just a few months before this report, an executive director of the National Education Association announced that his organization expected to accomplish by education what dictators in Europe are seeking to do by compulsion and force. So by education, they're forcing all this stuff on us with us even not knowing. It's, it's like a smooth way of getting us to follow their example by education. Crazy. I mean, and it's a system now because it's working, it's, it's basically running on its own now. People go to school willingly. They go to college willingly because they know they got to get a job in order to pay their pay they bills. Yeah. So how can, you, how can you buck the system? You really can't. You know what I mean? Look at, um, and most of our families, that's how they taught us to work. But if you don't work, you don't eat. So you got to work. <clears throat> So it's damn if you do, damn if you don't. That's why it's important to walk in the truth. When you're walking into all these other religions, it is not helping you. Because you don't have a dietary law that's going to protect you from all these diseases and, and these eugenics or genetically modified foods. You're not going to understand what the stuff is talking about. You know? Uh, I'll read one more paragraph. It says, uh, WW2, World War II, drove the project underground. But Harley retarded its momentum. Following cessation, cessation of global hostility, school became a major domestic battleground for the scientific rationalization of social affairs through compulsory indoctrination. Look at that. Great private corporate foundations led the way. So private corporations are what? They're steamrolling this 
education. All right. They're making so much money, hand over money, but they're also destroying a people. And you look at our people, they get college degrees, PhDs, they still can't get a job. So was it really for us? You know, some of us get a, a, a pretty good job. But for the most of us, a lot of us go to college and can't even get a job. You get four or five degrees, still can't get a job. It's just an indoctrination. <clears throat> All these schools are being financed, like I said, by corporations that have products that kill our people. This whole system is a monstrous system and is the downfall of the Israelites, the families of the Israelites, and even other nations when you look at it. Let's go to Habakkuk 2, verse 4. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. It's kind of, it's sad, but this is the way, this is the system that the most I was speaking of in the last kingdom. Right? It's the habitation of devils and foul birds. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. See that? Well, we're going to live by faith. Yea, also because he transgressed by wine, he is a proud man. Neither keepeth at home. He don't keep at home. He in this country, that country, taking over Australia. Right? Who enlargeth his desire as hell in his death and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. That's why you look around in America, you see all these different people here. They're all harping right up under the same umbrella here in America. Everybody want a piece of the pie. That's why the most I has to destroy this place because people got a one-track mind and they don't know right from wrong anymore. That's why you see all the hell going on on this place. I just was watching the news the other day. A woman put a baby in a microwave and exploded the baby. Another woman, grandmother, took a child and... Uh, this happened uh, this morning. Oh, this morning? Yeah, this morning. Put the child in the bathtub and drowned it. Her grandbaby in, in, the, in the bathtub and purposely drowned the baby. It's just horrific things going on in the earth right now. Horrific. You know? Let's go to um, Revelation chapter 11. Now, this man is destroying the earth. You know? Destroying it. And if the most I don't come back soon, it will be destroyed for all of us in it. Revelation chapter 11, verse 17. Revelation chapter 11, verse 17. Saying, we give thee thanks, O power. Hallelujah, most high. That's what he said. We give thee thanks, O power, the most high, almighty, which art and was and art to come. So he's saying he's going to be here in the future. Because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned. And the nations were angry. Why were they angry? Because the Most High is coming back to destroy this kingdom. And thy wrath is come. And the time of the dead that they should be judged. That's all these people not walking with the laws. And that thou should have given reward unto thy servants, the prophets. And to the saints. And them that feared the Most High. Small and great. And should have destroyed them which destroy the earth. Who's destroying the earth? We just went over that. This man is destroying the earth. That's why the Most High got to come back. This man is destroying the earth. Let's go to Psalms chapter 68. And, you know, I try to, I try to make sense out of these um, studies so we can see what's actually taking place because a lot of people can't see. You know, but if, if it's not spoken out where we can get correction from it and understand what we're up against, you know, if, uh, then, then um, maybe we can walk that right path. But if it's not spoken, how are you going to know what's right? You're going to be out there doing the same thing everybody else is doing. You know, this is Psalms chapter 68, verse 29. Psalms chapter 68, verse 29. Because of thy temple at Jerusalem shall kings bring presents unto you. This is going to happen in the future. 
Remember he said he's going to bring us a reward? Our reward is going to be beyond measure. It's going to be way beyond measure. Go ahead, Ock. What do you say? I said thank you. Okay. I mean, that's what the most I'm going to do. All praises. All praises. He's going to bring that judgment on this place because it's definitely needed. Let's go to Revelation 18. So your actions speak louder than words. What you do is, uh, you know, wh whatever your actions are, I could come back on you. You know, that's why I say try to apologize to brothers and sisters who are sincere that you may have caused to do wrong. Or, you know, just try to make a truce with that person. This is uh, Revelation chapter 18, verse 1. Revelation 18 and 1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of what? Of devils. And the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. He said every foul spirit. That's heavy, man. Think about that. You ever smell something that's foul? They've been sitting in the garbage for a while? The most I call these people foul spirits. Mm. You know? I mean, that's, that's how wicked this place is. And he says, yeah. and every unclean and hateful bird. You think about the American Eagle. It says, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through her or through the abundance of her delicacies. Now you know why they're waxed rich through these corporations. And I told you how the drug dealers even get paid. These other little countries, they're investing in the stocks of these corporations so they can get paid. So all these delicacies, all these delicacies are going to cause these people to lose everything. This is going to be a new Wall Street. You know, the Israelites going to have their Wall Street, you know, yeah. and we're going to make money off the other nations. It's going to be, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the other way around. Yeah. And it says, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that you may be part, that you may not be partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her play. That's why we don't vote. We don't follow the customs. I mean, what's voting going to help you do? Really, I mean, is that is that benefiting you in any way? Are you getting anything out of it by voting? Nothing. The Indians didn't vote. American Indians, they couldn't vote. When, when they came over and took their land, they just took their land. You know, we didn't vote to get on the slave ships and come over here. We didn't take a vote. They just put us on the ships. All right? What's voting going to do? You know? When you vote, you're basically saying that you're a part of this system. That you're down for whatever the system does. You know? Um, so we got to come out of her completely. You know? And it's not hard to do. It just takes time. You know? It says, For her sins have reached unto heaven, and the Most High hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her. Double according to her works. In the cup which she has filled, people as well. filled to her dumb. I have catch hell wherever you have gone, and have destroyed all the enemies in your path. I will make you a great name among the great ones of the earth. I will assign a place for my people in Israel. There I will plant them, and they shall dwell in their own land. 